I'm here uh, from my hometown of Vancouver, Canada. My name is Baba Brinkman. I now live in New York City and I'm a rap artist and playwright and I've found myself in the odd niche of being a popularizer of evolutionary theory for the public via uh, hip-hop comedy theater and I have an affiliation with Stern because they commissioned me to do a rap guide to business. So when I heard there was a business and evolution conference, it seemed like the perfect consilience of, uh, of all the different um, rap, evolution, popularization stuff that I've done, so I, I, I couldn't resist. Uh, it started uh, with a, a scientist who recruited me to do it, and I was originally rapping the Canterbury Tales, and um, this scientist, Dr. Mark Palin, who was at the University of Birmingham, reached out to me and said, if you can rap Chaucer, I bet you can rap Darwin. And that was new to me, but I liked the idea of the challenge, so I tackled um, several different popular science books. I wasn't really reading um, primary research at the time, but I've gotten into that a bit more recently, and it just was something that I had a propensity for. I really was very curious about it, found that it answered a lot of questions that I had, and of course the challenge was how do you make it a story? How do you make it interesting to people who don't care about the science necessarily, they just want to be entertained. And the way that I found the two best ways to do that, one is by uh, using natural selection uh, as a model for understanding culture and especially hip-hop culture and music and how the memes of certain artists proliferate against others and everyone's familiar with those stories, the sort of extinct species like Vanilla Ice versus the thriving species like Eminem. And then also evolutionary psychology seemed to explain a lot about hip-hop in which you have sort of swaggering alpha males displaying their resources and wealth and fighting capacity in overt ways, mostly according to them and according to the theory for the purpose of attracting nubile young females. So I thought, uh, you know, there's a lens through which rap takes on an interesting new uh, pallor and then the whole show was created out of those ideas. The, the hip-hop community has been, uh, been totally supportive of my stuff insofar as they've encountered it. So, um, you know, rappers, rappers have nested hierarchies as well. And um, I operate in the echelon of rappers who have sort of thousands or tens of thousands of fans, but not the echelon of rappers who have hundreds of thousands or millions of fans. Um, you know, I don't, I don't have Jay-Z in my Rolodex. I'd love to have him see the show. Uh, that hasn't happened yet. But, um, you know, a lot of local hip-hop artists here in New York have come and seen it, and they're more underground, but the response has been very positive. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is something that I've gotten into doing recently. I've done it at several conferences, and I'll, I'll sit in the back and listen in and take notes and, uh, and then try to quickly compose those notes into a, an original rap that, uh, that, that, that synthesizes the ideas from the conference and also sort of roasts some of the speakers in a good-natured way. So I see this as part of the troubadour tradition, you know, the herald at court making fun of the aristocracy. Right. Um, so this, was, this is today's rap. Forgive me, for I have sinned. Yes. I confess it. I'm an intellectual degenerate. I have a pathological ideas having sex fetish. I like to watch. I know. It's awful. I'm a Darwin apostle. I mean, I'm a known proponent of his followers and a disseminator of the biological gospel, and yet here I am, confessing like a guest on a talk show in the midst of this business school cum brothel. I blame Matt Ridley for that tricky biological, cultural, metaphorical equivalency. Journalism has never been approached so promiscuously, taking tangential ideas and relating them, linking them up. Now I can't think of commerce without thinking of smut. So let's do this. Pour some drink in a cup and let's call this an orgy, cause all the speakers are sluts. I mean, Pete Richardson's into cultural group action with biased transmission of best practices even if some of it's random and genes changing slower than the erosion of sand and institutional change is so slow that you can't plan it so we're stuck in some bad habits, but one business school is ready at least to stand up to receive to the received wisdom and inject some sex into a sleepy system. I came seeking answers and ended up splattered in horizontal meme transfer. Every lecture an intellectual costly signal enhancer, a pleasure-inducing peacock feather profusion full of clever illusions and sword measuring movements which somehow relates to the consumer habits of humans. Now I thought I had it. Stern was taking a turn for the activist integrating the Darwinistic consensus into its tactics and this flash of comprehension produced an orgasmic surge of happiness, but only for a nanosecond before Jeffrey Smith smashed it. 
He was revealing that natural selection had a sinister plan and happiness is just a barcode destined to be scanned, a signal of mental health that I used to get friends. And I knew it had to be true because he said it in a sad voice, totally deadpan. And that left the audience cold with no real option. Someone even turned to homeopathic pill popping. After all, what's the point when every recent development seems to intensify the competition for wealth obscene, when all we envision is a field of dreams and all we are is an amalgamation of selfish genes? Is it helpless as it seems? I mean, wait, what we need is an exodus of rebellious business owners to pack their bags and go follow Paul Romer and start a utopian city in Ethiopia and make it pro-social by doing a lot of homework. We'll staff the government with nothing but wise managers and build a perfect society, like Canada, a population of happy farmers and forest workers and dog owners with no subliminal aggression below the surface. Deserters can go join the circus, or if they return and their sins are repented, only a lecture on business ethics from Herbert Gintis will earn re-entry, or else we'll send them back to their home in New England on the coast a place that lacks an economic version of the Hippocratic Oath, a dystopia governed by survival of the fittest. But maybe today is the arrival of revision. We can change evolution and rebrand it and emphasize the even-handed side of it and make people want to befriend it. It's not survival of the fittest. Let's take it back to Mad Ridley. It's really proliferation of the jiggiest. It's reproduction of the most promiscuous. And today has been exceptional. Ten incredible speakers with brains bigger than chimp testicles. I've never been to a conference where every theorist is great, ready to engage in a serious debate. I bet every one of them started kindergarten three years late. Far from commonplace. This is one competition that is not an arms race. So let the gods be thanked. That means we're safe from the wrath of Bob Frank. The information has been flowing, so let's keep things going. I can't wait to see this conference's offspring growing.